So it seems as if Isaiah likely might have leaked the script for what Baltimore Ravens are trying to do on offense this year. And when you hear what he said and then you really think about it all, it's super exciting for Baltimore Ravens offense. Team keep it clean. We've watched over the past couple of years this Ravens offense with Mark Andrews and Isaiah likely. And we've seen the potential at different times. But not at the same time they haven't reached that potential with both tight ends on the field at the same time we've seen games where mark andrews will be going off like crazy but isaiah likely is very quiet then we saw this pass here where mark andrews was out with injury and isaiah likely he was just going crazy with it but with both of them on the field at the same time it just hasn't worked out at least not yet but does that mean the Baltimore Ravens are done trying? It doesn't mean the Baltimore Ravens are going to give up on having both tight ends on the field at the same time. Well, according to Jeff Zrebic of The Athletic and just of Baltimore Ravens fan base, we all love Jeff Zrebic. He said likely he could hardly contain his excitement when he discussed sharing the field with Mark Andrews along with Baltimore's other top playmakers. And here's what Isaiah likely said. Having all of us on the same field at the same time, you don't know whether it's going to be run or pass. And you don't know where the explosive play can come from, he said last week. And that's true. That's true because you got two tight ends on the field you might automatically be thinking oh yeah they run and they're gonna use those tight ends as extra blockers and they could be but at the same time you got those two receivers on the outside it could end up turning into a pass and of course with the ravens tight ends who are probably the best one two punch in the league they could go crazy with it so the, the mismatches are there the confusion for defenses it could be there as well but let's continue with this article from the athletic it says ravens coaches and players have hinted at some potential changes in the team's offensive approach in year two under todd munkin those changes haven't been very evident during the otas and they may not jump out at anyone during training camp or preseason when teams tend to keep things as vanilla as possible so you letting it be known like hey they ain't gonna be showing their hand like that but you gotta think after last season, well, after all the seasons that Mark Andrews has had as Ravens tight end, he just continues to go off like crazy every single year. But after watching Isaiah likely show that he's more than capable of handling a bigger role, more than capable of really being a number one tight end, then you are forced to make this thing happen. You're forced to find a way to get the job done. But here's where it gets even better. It says, it would make plenty of sense if one of those changes in 2024 was using more two tight end sets. Bucky Brooks, an analyst for NFL.com, recently wrote about a potential league-wide rise in 12 personnel. And whenever people say 12 personnel, 11 personnel, I'm like, speak English. What, 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 what do those terms mean for us that are not X's and O's guys? Well, he broke it down for us. He said, whenever you hear 12 personnel, it features one running back, two tight ends, and two wide receivers. That's it. Super, 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 super simple. But anyway, it says, uh, as offensive designers and play callers try to create more mismatches. So in 12 personnel, that would be Derrick Henry. That would be Mark Andrews, Isaiah Likely, and that would be Rashad Bateman and Zay Flowers. So, and then you still got Lamar Jackson on the field as well. So when you really, really think about that, think about the potential of that offense and the, the highs that they could reach as a team, the mismatches, the diversity that they have on offense, just, again, causing chaos to defenses because you got to worry about Derrick Henry taking off. You got to worry about Mark Andrews, Isaiah Likely going off. You got to worry about Zay Flowers and then Rashad Bateman. He can create himself to be a potential threat this season with some involvement and consistency and then – we ain't even talk about Lamar Jackson in that possibility, in that scenario yet. So that's real nasty for Baltimore Ravens offense. It says, uh, the Ravens used 12 personnel on 1,044 offensive plays last season, which equal to 11.1% of the time and ranked 27th in the NFL, according to Summa Sports. So you would think, like... Ravens having both Mark Andrews and Isaiah Likely, even though Mark Andrews was out for a chunk of the year last year. So that may have contributed to these numbers, too. Um, but you would have thought they would have used it a lot more. Um, but, yeah, I'm sure that the injury played a big part. But with him being healthy going into next season, I would definitely expect that number and that percentage really to increase a lot. It says, 
Uh, with likely his emergence in the second half of last season and the return of a healthy Andrews, the Ravens are prime candidates to use 12 personnel much more going forward. Okay, so I guess I should have read that part before I expressed my thoughts. So we were thinking we were on the same page, so shout out to you, Jeff. It says, just consider the possibilities and potential mismatches with quarterback Lamar Jackson taking a snap in front of running back Derrick Henry and then surveying downfield where wide receivers Zay Flowers and Rashad Bateman and tight end Andrews and likely are running routes now. This part right here. He said, you see it all across the NFL. The tight end position is growing and growing. This is what Mark Andrews said. Uh, these are the guys that are some of the best athletes on the field. So Mark Andrews said, I'm giving myself a shout out. I'm giving all of us tight ends that attend tight end you. We're getting a shout out. Uh, and he said, being big, tall, strong, and able to go and get passes. I love what we're able to do. And I think that we're going to continue to grow. Obviously, me, like, and everybody else. But it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun to be able to play around and game plan for that and just play some football. Obviously, we have Lamar Jackson, and he likes his tight end. So uh, we're going to get open for him. And, yeah, that's what it's all about. Mark, and like we talked about earlier, Mark Andrews, he has definitely established himself as one of the best tight ends in the league. And I know y'all are tired of hearing me say this, but with Isaiah Likely, if he got the opportunity to be a starter somewhere, easily top five tight end. He, he would be that. He's obviously not that right now. And with Mark Andrews being Ravens guy, will Isaiah Likely ever get an opportunity to be that with the Ravens? It'd be really tough. It'd be really, really tough. But what the Baltimore Ravens can do for this offense is find a way to get them both involved because they are both weapons. Lamar Jackson has chemistry with both of them. He trusts both of them like crazy. Obviously, through the years, we've seen his trust factor for Mark Andrews. There could be like three, four guys around Mark Andrews. If 89 is down there, Lamar Jackson's going to try to get it to him. But even with Isaiah Likely, we saw it. We saw the rapport. We saw the chemistry. I remember that play, I think it was against the, the Jacksonville Jaguars, I want to say, where... Um, Dwayne Smoot almost sacked Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson escaped out of the sack. He was running, scrambling, looking for somebody downfield, just waiting for somebody to come open. Isaiah likely didn't have one but two guys on him. Lamar Jackson put it up for him. Straight, put it up for him. Threw him a jump ball. I remember watching that game live. I'm like, oh, boy, this is getting ready to be an interception because it looked like the defender had position on Isaiah Likely. Likely said, nope, that's for me. And then there was another game. I forget the game, but I know y'all remember exactly which one it was when Lamar Jackson, they were in the red zone. Lamar Jackson threw it to Isaiah Likely, but he just looked, Isaiah Likely told him, he said, put it up. Put it up a little higher for me, and I got you. And then uh, whether it was a couple plays later or the, the next drive, Lamar Jackson put it up for Isaiah Likely, and guess what happened? Touchdown. Touchdown. So you may look at those like, oh, those are small plays. Those are little small occurrences, but those small plays make a big difference, especially when it comes to the quarterback trusting the tight end and the tight end being able to do what he needs to do, get in the right position for that quarterback to hit him for a play. So thinking about the offense and again, the addition of Derrick Henry, them being in the second year of this offense. So they'll have an even better understanding of how this offense operates. So that can make things a lot more smoother, too, because this offense wasn't really too like clunky. It didn't really look like, oh, I mean, they had a little bit of growing pains early on in the season, I guess. But overall, it didn't look like a first year offense. Oh, I mean, I guess we kind of spoiled by Lamar Jackson in first year offense because every time he's in a new offense, he just goes out and wins the MVP. So he makes these new offenses look super, super easy. So again, maybe we should have got rid of Todd Munkin and just got a new offensive coordinator so he could win another MVP. But my point is that with this offense, the, the the sky is the limit. The, the the opportunities are endless. What they can do, what they have the potential to do, and what I'm sure that I'm sure they're gonna deliver on a lot of that potential too. But this thing can be just straight up nasty. Now, uh, we talked about 12 personnel earlier. Let's get into another personnel. It says, Munkin's first season was characterized by a dramatic increase in 11 personnel. Now, what is that, you ask? Can you say it in English? Well, let's go. It says, 11 personnel calls for one running back, one tight end, and three 
wide receivers. I, I like that. He said it made sense after the Ravens drafted Flowers in the first round and they signed veteran wide receivers Odell Beckham Jr. and Nelson Aguilar as free agents. The Ravens lined up in 11 personnel or just un, on just under 48 percent of their offensive plays. That was still about 14 percent below the league average. Hmm. Now, here's where they lined up in this formation the most. Because I was wondering, like, all right, 12 personnel, well, they were like 27th, 11 personnel, 14% below the league average. Uh, but what were they in the most? It says, with one of the league's best fullbacks, Pat Ricard, at his disposal, Munkin also utilized 21 personnel. So here we go with another one. 21 personnel, meaning two running backs, two wide receivers, and one tight end on just under 24% of their offensive plays, the third highest rate in the league. So there it goes. <laughs> there, there, there it goes. That's what they were in a lot. You know, Pat Ricard, man. Pat Ricard is crazy because I didn't even think he was going to make the team last year. But he not only made the team, but he made a big impact on the squad. And then it says, so while 12 personnel was not one of Baltimore's top formation choices, listen to this. It was plenty successful when the Baltimore Ravens did go to it. The Ravens, who passed 52% of the time out of the grouping, led the league in expected points added when they were in 12 personnel. So when you hear stuff like that, and then you think about the potential and the possibilities of this year, how good they did when they went 12 personnel last year, it just makes sense that they continue to build off of that and get even better. 